Hey guys, Vertus here and welcome back to the Blueprints Creation Series. And in today's episode, we're going to be taking a quick look at how you can create some kind of basic grenade system inside of Unreal Engine. So if you have a look here, you can see I've got my projectiles and uh, after a couple of seconds it explodes, plays a sound and um, a particle effect with that. So that's pretty much what we're going to be doing. Uh, we're going to be creating all of this in Blueprints and we're going to be creating some rather complex uh, Blueprint systems for it. So I'm just going to go ahead and show you uh, pretty much what we're going to be doing. We're going to break it down and hopefully we're going to be able to replicate it by the end of the episode. So if you have a quick look here, I've got two blueprints. Uh, the first one is for the grenade and the second one is actually inside of the character blueprint. Uh, the character blueprint one essentially just spawns the object and makes a basic impulse and stuff and the grenade uh, sets up all the sound, visual effects and all that good stuff. Um, so let's just go ahead and take a quick look at the first person character blueprint. Seeing as it's the character that's going to be firing off this mechanic, uh, it's going to start off in here and that's going to be through the spawn actor node and then we're just going to set that up to uh, spawn a class, the frag grenade class uh, which we're going to be creating in a second and that's going to have all the video effects, sound effects and uh, all that stuff that I just mentioned. Uh, it's quite simple really, we've just got spawn actor, then we've got the location, rotation and a few other bits and we've also collapsed all of this into a little note into a little um, uh, function here which is quite nice just to make it a little bit more user friendly and um, and then inside of the grenade if we go ahead and take a look at that you can see that we have um, sorry let me just open it up for you so if we open up the frag grenade get the right blueprint here you go, you can see we've got add impulse, fire impulse, got a quick delay and then we're going to fire off the sound, the particle effect and then once that's all finished, destroy the uh, mesh itself as grenades, they don't really stick around, they explode and everything. So uh, let's go ahead and get started. So first thing you're going to need is a blueprint class for your grenade. Uh, that grenade is just going to be a normal actor, let's just right click in the content browser and create a new blueprint class and go ahead and press actor. Name this whatever you want, I'm just going to call it grenade for now and then open it up and you have a simple mesh in here. You can stick with this if you want to or you can change it. If you want to change it, it's quite simple. Just go ahead and add in a, uh, a mesh into this, a static mesh just like this and then just go ahead and change the mesh property over here. I already have a grenade mesh um, made from a game of mine uh, called Networks. I'm just going to go ahead and use that. Play around with the scaling and everything. Um, this is a little bit too big. I'm just going to scale it down for you. There you go. Once we've got that, apply the materials if you need to, if they're not all on there. But that's all we need. Uh, we also need something called a projectile movement component. This essentially allows us to set up the physics and everything, give it a little bit of starter impulse, and uh, get it ready to be fired off. So just go ahead and go up to add component, go to projectile movement, add that in there, and then go ahead and click it. From here we need to do a few things. First things first, we need to set up the initial speed. This allows us to change the speed that the uh, grenade is actually thrown out of the player. So uh, change this to something like 300 and then if we go ahead and press enter, we'll be able to play with that later uh, once we've actually got the mechanics running and everything. You've got a few other things you can play around with like max speed, uh, bounciness, friction and stuff, if you don't want it rolling as much or if you don't want it bouncing as much and so on and so forth. Just play around with that all you want to really. And then over with your static mesh, uh, you've got to do a few things in here as well. Just go ahead and press simulate physics. That allows us to make it bounce and all that stuff. Just, just allowing it to move around really and makes it dynamic. Now that we've done that, we need to start setting up the uh, the event graph for the grenade. So we need to set up the explosions, um, impulses, and all of that good stuff. So let's just go ahead and do that. It's quite simple, really. Uh, so let's go ahead and work with a begin play. The reason for this is that it allows us to, uh, when the actor first starts ticking, uh, once it's first spawned, it will start this little timeline of ours that we're going to work with. And the first thing we want to do is add an impulse. The impulse essentially just allows us to fire it off. So we're going to use add impulse at location. And then we've got a few things we've got to do in here. Static mesh is going to be the target. Uh, that's because we want the mesh to receive the uh, the impulse and under the impulse we've got to do a few things here we've got to work with get velocity and uh, get vector location so let's just go ahead and add these in get velocity 
and there we go. Let's chuck that in there. And then between get velocity and uh, the impulse, we need to do something. It's called a multi uh, vector multiplication. Uh, this essentially just allows us to play with the, uh, the value a little bit. So I'm just going to type in vector and then look for vector star vector. This is basically multiply. You've got minus, subtract, and all of that stuff. But for now, we're just going to use this. We're going to move this along, and we're going to hook this up into impulse. And next, we want to get the location. The location is quite simple, really. We're just going to use get actor location for this. Chuck that in there and uh, hook that straight up to the location. That essentially allows us to set the impulse location and that is uh, going to be self. Self right now is going to be the grenade, the whole blueprint actor. Um, so that's pretty much what we need for that. Next, we're going to need to fire off this impulse. Now that we've added it, it doesn't fire off automatically, so just go ahead and add that in. It's quite simple. Uh, to do that, you need to work with something called a radial force. This radial force actually allows us to um, what is it? Add damage to the object. So when a player walks through it, or you've got destructible items, it'll explode and add that damage. So to do that, just go to uh, Add Component and then add in a radial force. Uh, you can play around with the radius and stuff, but uh, the defaults should be perfectly fine. So go ahead and drag that in, and then from the radial force, go ahead and drag in a quick fire impulse. There we go. So now it should fire off the impulse and the damage should be uh, dealt. From that, we also need to set a delay. Grenades don't go off straight away. Uh, they wait for a couple of seconds before they blow up. You know, it gives them time to roll around and throw them in the air and all that good stuff. So just hook that straight up into a delay. The duration allows us to change the delay time. That duration we're going to work with now is probably going to be about three seconds. You don't want it to be too long. You don't want it to be too short. From this delay, after the delay, we need to set up the sound and the particle effect. So let's go ahead and spawn a uh, emitter now. So just drag that off and type in spawn emitter at location. And this emitter is going to be some kind of explosion effect. You should get some in the default uh, content browser stuff. Um, I've got a couple of particle systems already. Just use whatever you want. I'm just going to type in frag. There you go. And now we've got our Thing in there. Next up, you want to use your get actor location again, so we can actually set the location of uh, the. Sorry, so you can actually get the location of uh, the particle system where you want to place it. So to do that, just go ahead and uh, drag in any anything you want uh, in terms of components, and then just drag that in and uh, hook up get actor location. Sorry. Hold up, location. There you go, hook that up, and now we can actually hook up some kind of component into the target and then into the uh, return value that will go straight into location, which is pretty much exactly what we want. Um, it, it's not letting me use a static mesh for this, so just go ahead and use something else. If you want to, you can use the radial force and hook that up. Uh, just figure out some way to get it in there. Uh, from there, we've got to do a couple more things now. If you just drag that in. Okay, next up we need to add in the sound. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, and that's going to be play sound. Uh, there we go, it's play sound at location. Drag that in and choose the sound effect. You should have a bunch of effects, weapons and so on. So let's just go ahead and type in frag grenade explosion. That's what I'm going to use for now. You can just use whatever explosion sound effects you have. And once again, you can just use the location. Uh, you can chuck, you can get that in from anywhere you like, really. Just give me two seconds. Da -da -da -da. There you go. If you don't want to do play sound at location, there is an alternative uh, way of doing it. You can play sound at attached or spawn sound at attached. And that is going to go straight into here and then choose it once again. There you go. Uh, from that, all we got to do now is just simply destroy the actor. Uh, this will just pretty much get rid of the actor. Uh, it won't be shown on the screen anymore. And uh, you won't have loads of draw calls laying around and stuff. So let's just go ahead and do that. To do that, just right click, go to destroy actor. And then 
if we have this set to self, it will destroy the whole actor and it will be invisible and we won't be able to see it anymore. So if we just go back to the start of this little timeline here, you can see exactly what we've done. So to start with, we've got add impulse, fire impulse, then we've got a slight delay and that is also going to be, uh, after that we're going to spawn an emitter, the particle system, spawn a sound and then lastly destroy the actor. Now what we need to do is we need to work with the player uh, blueprint to actually spawn the object in if you haven't done that already. So to do that let's just go ahead and close the grenade blueprint and then open up the third person, first person, whatever you're working with really. Just open it up, go away from the, uh, the viewport in the third person uh, one. If you just go ahead and find that and go to the event graph and in here we actually need to set up the inputs no, not only the input but uh, also the spawning script so first things first you need to go ahead and go to your project settings to set up an input if you go to input and then just create one in here as I showed you in uh, episode 40 of the blueprint uh, of the Unreal Engine 4 beginner tutorial series just go ahead and go up here press press play uh, press the add uh, action mapping. This essentially allows us to um, add in an additional key binding. So we're going to call this grenade test. And then the key for this we're going to use is going to be to find anything on here really go to keyboard and we're going to use the caps lock key for this. We could play around with it and add control, alt, delete, whatever we want. Uh, you know extra buttons they have to play. But for now we're just going to use that. So go ahead and close that and with the third person blueprint open just go ahead and right click go to input sorry uh, grenade just type in grenade test action events and there we go and then we got our pressed and released the only one we're really going to be working with here is going to be the uh, the press they press it once and then you're going to be able to fire off all this cool stuff so from the pressed uh, we need to drag that out and spawn an actor at location uh, actor from class just like this now we need to set our class to the grenade uh, blueprint that we just made just go ahead and do that if you want to create uh, a whole bunch of different kind of grenades you can use pretty much the same setup and just change the uh, blueprint class just keep that in mind and then from here we also need to do a few other things those being uh, set the transform rotation and all of that cool stuff so to do that just go ahead and drag this out make transform and then just add that in and now we've got a few things to play around with that needs to be the location rotation and scale you can play around with the scale here to actually change the size of the object if I go ahead and press play right now possess and then press the caps lock key it should soon start spawning in the object you can't see it at the moment but we'll sort that out in a minute uh, the scale is probably a little bit off so let's just go ahead and play around with it so get actor location and we're going to use this to set the location so get here we go get actor location let's dump that in and we're going to use this to get the location of the player character so it actually spawns it um, just in front of the player and from this we're also going to work with a little vector uh, multiply node this time uh, let's go ahead and add that vector and this time it's plus vector and then just drag it in just like that and then we're going to hook up this pin into location now it should actually spawn the object uh, beneath the player or around it. Next up we got to go ahead and set the rotation. This is uh, quite easy actually. Just go ahead and once again type get actor rotation and then just hook that up straight into the rotation bit here. Quite simple really. There you go and now we have the target being the self and it should spawn it just beneath uh, the feet here. There we go. Now the next thing we need to do is um, add in some other rotation, uh, sorry some rotation vector stuff. Let's go ahead and do that. Just right click and type in rotate vector and hook that up in just here. 
Once you've done that, just go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and set a grenade offset. This essentially just allows us to uh, set the offset of, uh, well, we're not using rotate vector to rotate the object right now. We're just using it for placement. This is essentially going to allow us to offset the grenade a little bit so it doesn't spawn inside of the player. So it actually spawns a little bit in front and we can actually use this for the impulse to uh, just chuck the object straight in front. It doesn't collide with the character or anything like that. So we've got a grenade offset variable down here that I've created. If you want to create another one, you can do so quite easily. Just go to variables, press plus. From here, we want to change this to a vector. This allows us to have the three axes, X, Y, and Z, and then we can change them uh, independently. It says we can't change it right now because we haven't compiled. So go ahead and do that. And from this, we're just going to work with some values. I'm just going to put in some random stuff, 50, 50, and 50. Uh, this pretty much allows us to move it around. You can play around with these values if you want to, um, but what, like I said, it's entirely up to you, really. And then we're also going to hook up one last thing into here. We're just going to drag this in real quick, our little rotation, uh, our little offset vector. It's going to go to get, hook that up in there. And then the last thing we do is get control rotation. And we're going to hook that up in here just like that. And hopefully, now that we've done that, it should actually start spawning in our actor. Let's go ahead and press play, possess. And you can see that it is actually chucking out our grenades and after a couple of seconds they do explode and it works brilliantly. Um, if you want to play around with the particle effects, sounds and all of that cool stuff, you can do so. Um, but that's pretty much everything I wanted to show you for this episode. Uh, so thanks for watching, comment, like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.